In the previous two videos, we discussed setting up a new geological model and defining a custom boundary. In this video, we will discuss the different model building surface types available in LeapFrog and how they interact with each other. Once built, these surfaces are used to form the interlocking geological model volumes. LeapFrog creates surfaces using radial basis function, or RBFs. The RBF is a mathematical function which creates smooth surfaces between a series of points. One of the most common inputs into LeapFrog is borehole data. When building surfaces in LeapFrog directly from the borehole data, LeapFrog generates contact points at the contact between different units as specified by the users and then passes a surface through those contact points. The different surface types follow slightly different methods. The surface chronology subfolder in the geological model folder contains four different surface type functions, new deposit, new erosion, new intrusion, and new vein. I'll start by describing the functionality of the new deposit and new erosion surface types. New deposits and erosions create exactly the same surfaces. The only difference between them becomes clear when the surfaces are activated to produce output volumes. For both deposit surfaces and erosion surfaces, we can take a single lithology code, red for example, and tell LeapFrog to find the points at which the red lithology contacts either above or below against other lithologies. In this case, it contacts the orange unit and the yellow unit. LeapFrog extracts points at these locations and then puts a surface through these points. Now that we've seen how LeapFrog makes the surface, I'll explain the difference between the functionality of a deposit surface and an erosion surface when it comes to creating volumes. In this example, which is in section view, the two surfaces, the red-yellow and the yellow-orange, are identical to those in the erosion example and both are represented by black lines which intersect each other. As both surfaces are listed as deposits, the younger surface stacks on top of the older surface and when the volumes are created, it results in stacking depositional units. In this example, you can see the two surfaces represented by black lines are identical to those in the deposit example. However, in this case, as the red-yellow surface was created as an erosional surface, it cuts or erodes into the older depositional surface. New intrusions are used for modeling a surface around a particular lithology. We can take a single lithology code, in this case the yellow lithology, and tell LeapFrog to find the points at which the yellow lithology contacts against all other relevant lithologies, in this case the orange and red lithologies. LeapFrog extracts points at these contact locations and then passes a surface through the points. The points are made up of contact points and volume points. As we can see, the contact points are green and represents the point at which the two units contact against each other. The volume points represent the inside, as we see here in red, and the outside, as we see here in blue, of that surface. When we create volumes, it looks something like this. The vein and vein system tool are both suitable for modeling thin, tabular volumes such as lenses or dikes. We start by specifying the lithology that is inside the vein, in this case, the green unit. LeapFrog will then take each interval of that lithology and assign a hanging wall point to the top of the interval and a foot wall point to the bottom of the interval. Each set of points is then surfaced to produce a hanging wall surface and a foot wall surface. The hanging wall and foot wall surfaces will extend to the model boundary by default and the volume in between the two surfaces will comprise the vein. Now that you have a better understanding of the different surface types in LeapFrog, check out the next video in this series in which I demonstrate them in the software to build our geological model.